Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment and subscribing to the channel. If you are watching this video, then there's a very high chance that you're a human, which is fantastic. Though if you aren't a human and still watching this video, well, that's pretty darn impressive too. But unfortunately, you might feel a bit left out of this one. The word human comes to us from the Latin humus. This was a Latin word for soil slash dirt slash earth, and is actually still the name for a specific type of soil to this day. But why are we named after the ground beneath our feet? Well, this is very much a mythological slash metaphorical etymology. In many creation myths, humans were formed from earth and dirt. In Greek mythology, this is quite literally the case, as Prometheus made humans out of mud and clay. And in a metaphorical sense, it fits too as we are of this ground. Not in the way that we literally sprout from the dirt like a carrot, but we are the inhabitants of the earth. From this approach, human does actually kind of mean earthling too, which by now is a term that's picked up a very strong sci-fi vibe. However, it's pretty rare that people simply call themselves a human, or refer to others as humans. This is primarily because we have created a series of names for the types of human that we are, and a different name can be applied to you depending on how old you are, and I've no doubt you've heard these words before. They are probably some of the most common words spoken on a daily basis, but just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, I mean names like baby when you were just born, or adult as you get older. This whole process and the names that come with it are called a variety of things like human ages, body development, or as we'll be using today, the stages of life. And these are times in our lives that we should all go through, and for so long they are the defining feature of who you are. When you're a child, being that young is your entire identity. Most adults will look at you as just being a kid, and vice versa. However, time marches on, and as you grow older and your body changes, different names for stages of your life will fit you. And trust me, it can be pretty startling when you first start to realise that the outside world is starting to perceive you in a different way. On a personal note, I have such a clear memory of when people start to think of me as a man and not a teenager or a kid. Before name explaining, I worked in a supermarket, and as I was restocking the toy aisle, some kid asked asked his mum if she could see a specific toy, and I remember hearing the mum say to the kid, why don't you ask the man over there? And I was like, what man? I was probably 18 or 19 at the time, thought to myself as a young teenager still, but evidently other people view me in a different light. To this day, I still struggle with the concept of being a grown up. Seriously, if you're still a teenager, enjoy it while it lasts. Personal ramble aside, let's look into the stages of life that we all go through in our lives, find out what exactly they mean, what ages are usually applied to them, and most importantly, explain their names. And for this, I want to go right to the very start, like before you were even born, and before you were even a single thing inside your mother's womb. As to begin with, the single thing that you are starts as two separate things. These are the two reproductive cells of your mother and father, the sperm cell and the egg cell. Yes, this video is also kind of a sex ed video, so strap in everyone. Sperm cells are the male reproductive cells. Pretty much all male animals have them and they are shaped somewhat like tadpoles, with a head slash body and a long tail to help with navigation. Sperm are quite remarkable cells. As Bill Bryson puts it in his book The Body, they are the astronauts of human biology the only cells designed to leave our bodies and explore other worlds. But on the other hand, they are blundering idiots. They seem curiously ill-prepared for the one task evolution has given them. They are terrible swimmers and appear to have almost no sense of direction. The word sperm seems to derive from the Greek sperma, meaning the seed of any plant or animal, which makes sense as sperm has seemingly always had connotations with seeds of plants. It seems a fancier name for sperm cells is spermatozoan. This comes from the word sperm as we've already talked about and the atozoan prefix is Greek, meaning animal slash living being. The female reproductive cell is called the egg. These cells are produced by the female body and are released once a month. They are actually the biggest single human cell. They can even be seen with the naked eye which is incredible. They are commonly known as eggs but the more scientific name for the human egg is the ovum which like sperm is a Greek name. Both ovum and egg seem to come from a proto-Indo-European word which over time created both these words. Unsurprisingly egg is an incredibly old word hence why we don't seem to know too much about its etymology. When a male sperm cell and a female egg cell finally meet, however, then fertilization has begun, and you are on your way to becoming you. However, the very first thing you are when these two cells fuse together is called a zygote. While a zygote is just a single cell and is only around for a short amount of time after fertilization, it contains everything that makes you, you. Your skin, bones, organs, hair, all the genetic information from a new life is right here. It really is quite incredible. But why on earth does it have that odd name? It seems odd to think that once upon a time, myself and yourself would have been nothing but this humble zygote. Well, this comes from Greek once again with the word zygotos, meaning yoked, slash to yoke. Now, despite this relating to the egg cell, this kind of yoke has nothing to do with the yoke of an egg. Completely different words with different spellings, meanings, and origins. This kind of yoke is a verb and means to join, like how a beam 
used to hold ox together is called a yoke. The name for this early life stage comes from this Greek word as the zygote is the sperm and egg joining together. As the zygote grows older, over the next few days its cells begin to split and create more and more cells. This is known as cellular division, or more properly, cleavage. The word of cleavage comes from the words of cleave and edge. Cleave is a verb meaning to split coming from ancient roots, while the age suffix is commonly seen to form verbs into nouns, so it makes sense as to why this action of cell splitting would be called cleavage. And if you look at a diagram of cell cleavage in action, it may look familiar, hence why something else is properly known as cleavage too. This isn't exactly a life stage, but it's a fun etymology fact I didn't want to pass up. Anyway, after enough cleavage has taken place, you are onto the next stage of life, being an embryo. An embryo is when you are still very early into your development, but starting to take shape and look somewhat more human. In layman terms, it's when you look like one of those slime alien toys that were popular in the 90s. This word once again comes from Greek roots. The M at the start is a Greek prefix meaning into, while the latter half of the name comes from another Greek word, bluen. This word means things like to grow and swell, which makes sense. As an embryo, you are growing and swelling in your mother's womb. You stay as a zygote slash embryo for around 8-9 to nine weeks, as at this time you have developed enough to take on a whole new name, that being fetus, sometimes spelled with an O because why not. As a fetus you have attained your basic structure and form, but still remain unborn. This word comes from the Latin fetus and means pretty much the same thing, though it's thought to ultimately derive from a Proto-Indo-European word, meaning things like to suck, nourish and be fruitful, which I guess comes from the fact that as a fetus we are sucking away food and energy from our mothers, and what they eat, allowing us to be nourished and fruitful. And you are technically a fetus for the rest of the time you are inside your mother. However, the moment you take your first breath and are free from your mother, you take on a new name. That being the simple name of newborn, which isn't that fun and pretty obvious, as you are newly born. Luckily, however, we have a more interesting scientific name for this time in our lives too. That being neonate. Though despite sounding way more fancy, it simply means newborn in Latin. And that Latin word for born, natus, is still used in the world of pregnancy to this day, with things like postnatal, meaning after giving birth. You are labelled as a neonate slash newborn for just the first 4 weeks of your life. After this you are firmly a baby, and you are considered a baby up until around the age of 1. Baby is actually a diminutive of babe, which is a word we don't really use for children anymore, but this word of babe is thought to be imitative of the babbling of a baby. The more fancy name for a baby is an infant, and this word comes from Latin origins too. The first part of in means not slash unable, and the latter half means to speak in Latin, so infant means unable to speak, as infants aren't too great with words. What I found interesting is that one of these names derive from the sounds they make, while the other name is an observation of the lack of sounds they make. After being a baby you become a toddler, and toddler is a name used for humans roughly around 1-3 to three years old. As a toddler you start to develop way more, not only physically but socially, emotionally and cognitively too. The real fun seems to start around the age of being a toddler. One of the biggest steps you take as being a toddler is just that, steps. Most children learn to walk as toddlers, and it's from this action of walking as to where the name comes from from, as the noun of toddler comes from the verb toddle, a Scottish slash English term meaning to walk with unsteady steps, which makes sense as the first steps you take as a toddler are more toddled than an actual walk. And finally, at around 3 to 4 years of age, you become a child. Your time as a child is the longest time period yet, lasting from around the ages of 4 to around 10, so 6 years of your life. And it's as a child you start to do things like make friends, go to school, find out what you like and dislike, and generally become you. A lot of the stuff I began to love as a kid, like Lego and video games, I still love to this day. Child is just one of those really old words that came back through all sorts of Germanic languages into English. However, one root it seems to come from is with the Middle English verb of children, meaning to give birth, so it most probably came from here. Another name for a child is a kid, which to start with was slash still is the name for a young goat, and it would seemingly apply to young humans too eventually. As being a child is such a long time, a lot of people split up into things like being a preschooler, then a middle schooler and so on, but we won't be looking into those here. The next definitive life stage you take on is being a preteen at around the ages of 10-12. to 12. Being a preteen is such a funny time, it's when you think you aren't a kid anymore and don't want to do kiddie stuff, but can't actually do more exciting things until you're a bit older. This name is pretty self explanatory, pre obviously means before and the teen part of this name references the teen numbers, as as a preteen you haven't hit those teen years of age yet. Yet. And as for teens meaning, it means 10 more than, as we talked about in the past. Another name for a preteen is a tween, which is a combination of between and teen, as these years are between being a kid and being a teenager. Which leads us onto your next life stage, teenager. Your teenage years last from 13 to around 18, even though 19 is still a 
teen number you don't really see as being a teenager. As a teenager, you gain way more independence and of course, start puberty, which changes the biology of your body for your later life. Being a teenager is a fun, scary, confusing time in anyone's life. Teenager of course comes from the adjective of teenage, as in something that's aged in its teens, and the er uh prefix was added to make it into a noun. What's interesting is that the concept of a teenager that we have today is actually a recently new thing, seeming to arrive from the USA in the 1950s. After your teen years, how have you entered the longest stage in your life, being an adult? This is pretty much from 19 onward until around 60 or so. As an adult, you will do so much. Start working properly, have children of your own, get confused by what young people are doing, all that stuff. It really does take up a bulk of your existence and people split into various parts like a young adult, middle aged and etc. Initially, adult was an adjective, meaning things like grown up and mature. It comes from the Latin prefix of ad, meaning to, and their word arcelin, meaning be nourished. So it means to be nourished, as by the time you're an adult, you clearly have been nourished enough. And finally, in the last stage of life, you can choose from a nice selection of names, from elder to senior citizen to simply old person. This last stage is usually seen as starting at 60, but as people are living longer, healthier lives, the age you start your later life, it will probably increase too. It seems that senior and elder both come from the same Latin root of sinolus and evolved into these two words over the years. That's just about all the stages you'll go through in life, from being a zygote when first conceived to a senior citizen in your twilight years. Though of course, this was just the English language. Are there fun names for the stages of life in your language? And which stage is your favorite? Do you look back with fondness on your teenage years, can't wait to be elderly, or pine to go back to the simpler time of being a child? Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Patron is vital to Name Explain, and donating just two dollars a month allows you to enjoy ad-free videos and bonus patron-exclusive content. It also allows you to help choose which names get explained in upcoming videos, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you all so much for the support you guys give Name Explain. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Check out another video and subscribe to stay in the loop and all things Name Explain. You can find me on Twitter, I'm at Name Explain YT. On Instagram, I'm also Name Explain YT. And on Facebook, just search Name Explain. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.